Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today I want to give you a little gift, a very empowering tool that will open up your guitar playing in ways that you probably might not have even fathomed if you're a beginner guitar player. I want to remove your fear of exploring chords. Now, I've actually done a whole series called The Chord Explorer, where I take each of the five chord shapes on the guitar and really explore what you can do and why you might want to choose some grips over others and use capos and stuff like that. It's a series that I would recommend that you do as a grade three thing. And this particular lesson is part of grade two. But I just wanted to open the door a bit and give you some possibilities to explore on your own and realize that there's a lot you can do with chords that are very, very simple that sound really great, a great way of lifting your guitar game generally. It's centered around the idea that you should be using your ears when you play chords and not your mind and not your eyes. Because up to this point, we've learned specific chords and we've learned that you play when there's a D chord, you play this shape and that's where your fingers go. And we're trying to get all of the notes to ring out clearly and all of that sort of stuff. But Actually, the reality of making music is that it's a lot freer than that. And a lot of the really creative songwriters and creative musicians are doing things a little differently and trying out new things. And it's something even as a beginner, you can get hip with that. It's not something that you can only do when you get advanced. You can be exploring that stuff and getting creative with the guitar playing right now. So let's get to a close up and check out how we might explore our chords. Let's start off by having a look at a D chord. Now we all know that's the regular shape that you should play if you're playing a D chord. But what happened if you didn't play the note, say, with your first finger? Does it sound bad? Well, it doesn't really sound like a D. I'm not sure I'd play this instead. But this movement sounds great. Just lifting that first finger off. What about the third finger? Can we lift that one off? That's a pretty interesting sounding chord. You have to make sure that you can get that open B string ringing out there between your fingers. A lot of you will be muting it, it'll be a bit dead. But lifting off that finger makes it a D6. Doesn't really matter the name. But what about lifting first and third off together? Massively sure I like that one, but you know, might have a place. Lifting the second finger off is actually a chord we're going to be looking at uh, in the next lesson when we talk about sus chords. It's a sus two chord. What if we lift first and second off together? That sounds pretty cool. There's all sorts of things that we could do here. What if we move the fingers? I don't know. Again, this would not be a substitute for a D chord, but if you were writing a song, or third finger back, oh, D major seven, more commonly played like that, but that's fine. There really are no limitations here. You can explore these chords in any way that you like. If you're playing a song, like doing a cover of a tune, some of the experiments won't sound great. So you try a different one. It's that simple. There's no, you can look at the complexities and look at the theory behind what notes you can choose and all of that sort of stuff. But at this point, I would recommend just using your ears because your ears will tell you whether you like the sound of it or not. Okay, that's the key thing here is whether you like the sound of it or not. You should try to be objective a bit and go, yeah, yeah, yeah maybe that one's not cool here. But there aren't any rules. Maybe one that sounds not cool to someone else will sound great to you and the other way around. It, it, it really doesn't matter. It's something I really encourage you to explore this stuff. And let's just go through some of the other shapes and see what we come up with. So A was a, another chord that we learned pretty early on. But if we lift off the second finger here. Fairly cool, you know, it's kind of got its place. First finger off. This is actually an A7 chord, something else we're going to learn a little later in this course, but definitely. That one's really cool. 
lift off your third finger. This is another one we're looking at today a little later on. This is this A sus2. But you, you experiment. What if you move it all up? Now you would th definitely think if that was on the wrong fret, it would sound horrible. It sounds pretty tense. As long as you end up on the right chord, actually it sounds pretty cool, you know, and you can explore. That sounds cool. There's no limits here. You just got to try them out. E chord. Lifting off second finger sounds great. Lifting off third finger gives you E7. Very usable shape. First finger lifting off gives you E minor. We already knew that one. So as far as lifting off goes here, then, you know, there's not that many new thing, new sounds here. Uh, but what about little finger? So many different things you can do with this. G chord, I mean, it's a little bit limited here. If we lift off that bottom note, it sounds a little bit too bassy there, so it changes the sound of the chord. So that's less possible, but little finger off. So you're just playing that one note on the bottom string. As you get more advanced, I don't recommend you do this straight away, but Can add any or all of those notes. There's, it really is. There's open season there on the on the G chord. That's more mixing up a scale with a chord. Again, something that we learn uh, in the intermediate course in the folk finger style ideas. But just in principle. There's nothing wrong with having a bit of an experiment, seeing what you can come up with. Uh, last shape of the, the common five shapes that we've got would be a C chord. Now, first finger off, lovely chord, C major seven. But again, you don't have to worry that that's what it's called. It's just lifting your first finger off. And then put it down the wrong place. Lifting second finger off. The C chords, lovely. So the conclusion here is that you can do more or less what you want if it sounds good. And that really is the key thing. If it sounds good, it is good. I would really encourage you to explore these ideas every time you're learning a new tune. Just Try the chords, try lifting a finger off if you've got a, if you're stuck on one chord for ages, say, try lifting different fingers off, seeing if you can make a little riff out of it. Just don't be afraid of it. And for years and years when I was playing, I didn't get into the idea of just doing whatever I, ideas I wanted. You know, I, I, I always felt like even as a, writing songs and stuff, it had to be these chords or these are the shapes that you should use or you shouldn't do this or you shouldn't do that. And it, it really was, I found it difficult to break out of that. So that's why I think it's important at these beginner stages to never put those shackles on in the first place. You know, there are things, there's chords in the key that we've talked about a bit, and that, that's a very useful thing to know, but it certainly shouldn't define you when you're writing songs. You should be using whatever you like, and there's no reason that you can't explore the chords completely. You know, re really muck around with them. Try moving the chord shapes up and down the neck. There's another little tidbit for you. Just take your C chord, move it up. Hmm, that sounds a bit weird. Up again. Oh, that sounds nice. Now, I know where that one's going to sound nice. If I put it here, doesn't really sound nice, but that's just an experience thing. Try E chord, another nice one to move around.
just go and have some fun with it. This isn't part of your practice routine. This is bigger than that. This is every time you're playing a song, every time you're having a bit of a noodle and playing around on the guitar, try some new stuff. There's no limit here. And the more you do this, the more you'll learn about the guitar, the more you'll discover cool things, the more you'll develop your own musical personality. And all of that stuff is super important. I really hope you enjoyed this lesson. Remember, this is a kind of introductory thing to the Chord Explorer module, which I'd recommend that you get stuck into after you finish grade two, where we go into each of the five chord shapes, look at them in a little bit more detail. And maybe we try all of those things like lifting the fingers off and adding different fingers down in different spots. But there are some, maybe some ideas that you might not think of straight away. And I try and encourage you into exploring certain areas of that. It's loads of fun. So let me know how you're getting on in the comments love to know what discoveries you've made, how much fun you're having with all of this stuff. And if you've got any problems, of course, let me know in the comments on the website. I'll do my best to answer it for you. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.